Have you ever spiritually fasted? You mean you mean fast like not eating food? Yeah. Fasted in that sense? Yeah. Because spiritually fasted sounds like have you ever not you know, it doesn't necessarily equate to food. Yeah, I have fasted once actually, for about two and a half days I wanna say, and, and it was a great experience. Um, it kind of made everything in my life very clear. Uh, and I started to uh, kind of anticipate things that were about to happen, which is quite interesting. Do you have a green lifestyle? Um, I don't think any of us living in modern civilization have a real green lifestyle. Um, you know, none of us are indigenous living in the, in, in, in the outback, if you will, and growing our own food. And well, some people are harvesting their own energy, etc. So I don't think I live a green lifestyle, but I try to get as green as possible. Obviously, I recycle and uh, I get as many miles per gallon in my car as, as humanly possible uh, in a model. And, uh, you know, on tour, we try to do a lot of things that um, cut down our footprint. And I've got a few cool technological ideas having to do with holographic touring that I think would make a tremendous impact on our industry specifically as far as our carbon footprint. Do you want to talk about the holographic touring a bit? I'm going to save that for another session. Cool. Yeah. Um, when did you realize you could make a living out of your music? Um, when did I realize? I never really knew. It was it was kind of like uh, when I was in my early twenties. I had kind of came. I had an epiphany that music is what I need to do to be happy. And as soon as I realized that, I dedicated myself fully and became a lifer, as we call it. And uh, you know, and I didn't realize I could make a living off it. I was hoping I could. But I knew that I had to do music every day to be happy. And I think, I think the music industry is, is so difficult that you have to kind of risk it that way. You have to be like, I got to do this. I have no choice for it to work, for your visualizations to actually be strong enough for them to, you know, be realized. So since you didn't go to school to become a musician, how did you learn about music and get interested in it? Noodling. I mean, I mean, doodling, noodling, doodling, noodling, doodling. Uh, just playing around, grab this small keyboard, like a Casio keyboard, and start playing around. And at the time, I had I was about to start college or going to college, and you know, it, w it was a great way of kind of meditating. It was a way of not thinking about anything else, my studies or work or whatever, you know, whatever other issues were going on. And uh, so it, beca it was a great escapist, you know. It was it was a great form of escapism, and you know that led into it becoming my career. Do you think we'll ever have a president who will acknowledge genocide, or is it just a fantasy? We already have had a president who has acknowledged the Armenian genocide and used the G word. That was Ronald Reagan, actually, in the 1980s. And uh, Congress, a few times in the 70s and 80s, have passed a genocide resolution in the U.S. A lot of people don't know that. And the reason that I think, you know, the reason that we also, we keep on wanting Congress to pass a genocide resolution today uh, is because Turkey, a strong ally of the U.S., has still not, mm, kept, you know, has still not been honest enough with its own history to do the right thing, and we're hoping that by doing so, it'll pressure the government of Turkey to do the right thing. But it's also our our archives, you know, the U.S. archives show this genocide: one and a half million people killed during World War World War One in the Ottoman Empire, uh, and you know, uh, Armenians and Greeks and Assyrians were massacred at the time. And um, the lessons learned have not been enough. You know, we've had the Holocaust in this in the 20th century. We've had Rwanda. We we just recently had Darfur, and we still, as a as a universal humanitarian body, don't have a protocol to deal with genocide or Holocaust. You know, if a genocide was happening today, there's no international way of you know stopping China from giving them arms or the U.S. from giving its allies money if 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 it's an ally of, of ours. Like, there's no international UN protocol to stop genocide, even though we've experienced it as a huge human disease in the 20th century. And here we are in the 21st century. We haven't learned our lessons as much as we want to say, you know, uh, that we have. What do you think about Obama saying that he'd recognize it before he was president, and then when he was president, kind of shying away? That's been the kind of uh, modus operandi of most presidents. You know, they kind of... Uh, use the genocide word before they're president and promise all these things. And then when they become president, they try to shy away from it. That has a lot to do, I think it's a mistake, obviously. Uh, it has a lot to do with, you know, Turkey being a NATO ally and Turkey not wanting him to use that term. 
but I don't expect my president to listen to a foreign government. I don't expect my Congress to vote, uh, you know, to have votes by a foreign government. I expect them to, to listen to the voice of the American people. And uh, the genocide is historically the truth, and it needs to be recognized. Um, and, I, you know, for the same reasons that, you know, I explained earlier, that we don't really have a national, uh, an international way of dealing with genocide. We haven't learned the lessons, and what better way to learn the lessons than at least come clean with our history. What is your view on civilization today? Hmm. Um, hmm. I think uh, I think we're walking our last steps as what we call civilization. I think we're going to be evolving into a new era of living, into a new uh, lifestyle, if you will. And, you know, Imperfect Harmonies actually has some really interesting kind of uh, clues and uh, unraveling truths um, regarding where to go in that world. Um, I talk a lot about rain, for example, like Peace Be Revenged. Um, and, you know, if you... You know, we never think about this, but if there's an area in the world that doesn't rain and we import our water, then we're dependent on shipping, trucking to bring us our water. And if there's that's ever, you know, um, stopped, if it's ever broken, that chain, whether it's from an earthquake, natural disaster, terrorism, whatever, um, then we might, you know, die. You know, and we never think about that. We always assume that we can get anything we want everywhere that, that, that there is. And that's obviously not the truth the uh, accelerated rate of destruction of natural resources on the planet coupled with an accelerated rate of growth in population is not something that um, should be taken lightly. Um, so we have to start paying attention to the little important things like, you know, like Southern California, where do we get our water from? Most of our water doesn't come from here, you know. Nevada, for example, same issue. Um, Arizona. And these are important things to start thinking about. Um, yeah. And the final two... Um, where can I buy uh, your sheet music? Um, we are going to make a book of our sheet music for Imperfect Harmonies. Um, I don't know when, but soon. And put it out as a merch item. Yeah. Do you take enough time for yourself with your busy schedule and what you do in your spare time? Was that supposed to be Irish? It was a it was semi. Few things. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, kind Just of capping it off. Boston, third yeah. generation Irish, maybe? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I love to, you know, on my spare time, I love to write music. <laughs> it, it's really true because the times that I actually come up with the, you know, open the windows or doors for inspiration to creep through to me to present is when I'm actually free from all my other responsibilities, uh, free from the phone calls and emails and interviews and everything where I can actually just be myself and, you know, get back to the truth, get back to you know, uh, the inspiration, the muse. Um, but also, you know, I love reading when I'm, when I'm on holiday, I love, you know, hiking and running and going to the beach and, you know, um, you know, just kind of living a healthy lifestyle, mind, body, soul. That'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. Well, am I closing this? Viewers, watchers, listeners, friends, friars, fiends. Thank you for joining us. This is I guess the end of the Imperfect Harmonies live stream. I'm really thankful that you guys decided to join us tonight. And uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime.